Aloha, I'm Kala'i Miller, and on this episode of Home Is Here, we're at Sumida Farm, located in the heart of urban Aiea. More than 50 years ago, the Sumida family fought to keep developers out, leading to Pearl Ridge Center being built around the farm instead of over it. Fast track to today, and the farm is still thriving and still in the family, though it hasn't been without some tough times. I always knew that our farm meant something to others, but it wasn't necessarily because my family was telling me, you know, this place means something. But I will say my father was really, really great at helping me understand our history and our place in history. A hundred years here is really a small blip in the long timeline of the Aina, and that we have to respect that. got started in 1928 by my great-grandparents when they obtained a lease with Kamehameha Schools for about five acres of watercress wetland. At that time, most of the farms were doing sugar and pineapple, so we're really happy that out of all the crops that they chose, it was watercress. We have these beautiful freshwater springs, the Kalau Springs, that nourish and feed the land, and without them, our watercress really couldn't grow and, and be as good as it is. Just that combination of thinking forward about knowing that you're producing a crop that's going to feed families and nourish them and utilize our natural resources in the best way. I'm so grateful that my great grandparents chose that path for not just them, but for our family. And every generation of the farm has faced one big crisis that they've had to take on. And the biggest one for Emmy's grandfather was the development of Pearl Ridge. And at that time, KS developers had plans to pave over the farm and to make this a part of Pearl Ridge. But this small farmer, through relationships and influence and lobbying and just hard work, was able to protect this Aina and protect this farm. The big challenge that we took on early on was the transition in the business. So when Kyle and I decided we want to raise our hand and help step up as the next generation, we were actually really nervous to talk to my family because truly we weren't coming from a farming background. There's a lot of reasons why someone would say we weren't necessarily suited for the job. We were staying on the farm with our young daughters and planned a dinner with my Auntie Barb and I still remember it really clearly. We kind of staged it all out because I wanted to carve time to really have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I didn't want to rush it. So when we got to the topic of, you know, hey, we are interested in, in helping to manage the farm, she was surprised. I mean, she was really surprised. Uh, and I think her first reaction was concern for us, which um, I think speaks to her spirit and kindness. Is she was mostly concerned that what it would do to our family and how much stress and challenges we would face in taking this step. So that's something I always think about when we face a challenge, um, is, is just that idea that people were looking out for us and, and knew what we would face, not specifically, but, but the idea. So yeah, I, I think that she was more concerned, but once we started vocalizing and working through the concerns, I think that she also saw the relief in it, that it wasn't just on her and that it wouldn't just go away one day, that there was a plan and she stood behind us 100%. When Emmy's auntie was diagnosed with cancer, unfortunately it was a very aggressive form of cancer from uh, when she was diagnosed to when she passed away was only six weeks. And we had uh, been in discussions with her for a couple years around at some point in time taking over the business, learning the business with her, and then taking over when she was ready to retire. And the original timeline was seven to nine years, 
and we were really still in year one and a half when she was diagnosed with cancer and at that this was January of 2020 we flew in um, because we live in Seattle and came here to help manage the farm help pick things up then the pandemic hit in March of 2020 and we had to manage that for about a year and a half you know of going back and forth of 14 day, 10 day quarantines, and it, it definitely was a challenge. But what we learned was, it was probably the hardest thing we've ever done, ever in our lives. But it was the most fulfilling thing we ever did because in a time where restaurants were closing and people were having problems getting food, we were able to prioritize accessibility of our watercress, making sure we were getting it out to grocery stores. And if we ever had access, it went to donations to the Hawaii Food Bank. And it really brought to life our purpose and the things that we were passionate about, that we really cared about. My auntie used to tell us that she believed like having a really positive outlook and knowing that you can get through anything helped us survive all of these different crises over the years. So I tried to really challenge that in this last couple years when we were dealing with a lot of different difficult moments. And I think that now that we've also proven to ourselves that we can get through some difficult challenges, uh, I think we, we have that positive outlook that, that we'll get through anything. We've just been so fortunate between my Uncle Dave, my parents, and the family, and the community, and, and so many partners that we work with. I mean, so many people along the way have helped us and bailed us out when we didn't know where to go or what to do next. Um, and so I, I just, I, I'm so grateful because I know that some of these people wouldn't necessarily help us if it was just us but they're helping the farm and the legacy that the farm brings with it. Having our kids participate and be a part of the farm experience with us has been extremely meaningful. Here on the farm, they're a part of it. They get to see the challenges, but they get to see how hard work, perseverance, planning, teamwork, all of those things come together and the outcome of that. But one of the things that we've also talked a lot about is just because we are part of the farm doesn't necessarily mean one day we're handing the keys automatically over to the kids. It needs to be something that in some ways they've earned and they care about and they want to see forward. Because when we think about the farm, it's not just a small family business, it's a community farm. And this farm means so much more to the community than just our own selves. When we look at the future of the farm, we're so excited. I mean. We're just scratching the surface of some of the ideas that we have on how to bring this farm to the community more. We promise this is just the beginning of some really awesome things to come.